What another transformational week. I'm sure everybody tuning in every week, we get to the next one and go, what else can unfold? There is so much going on in the world. My hat has been tingling nonstop. And I want to welcome everyone that tunes in every week live, or you might listen to it on your favorite podcast or the radio show, YouTube, wherever you come to find us later. And uh, today we're going to talk about money. I'm so excited. But first, we, if you have not been in the book club, come tonight. It's our last night, 7 p.m. Eastern. God, where are you? It's me. We have had incredible feedback. We have a lot of fun. So tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, you can go to the website, tracyalclark.com, and still sign up and enjoy us. It's just a free time. We've been reading and exploring and shifting, and we've had great, great feedback. So join me. I think there's a number two in the works. So yeah, you know, you finish one thing, and then you think, I'll take a breather, and then there's something else happening. So but I'm really excited today because one of the things I talk a lot about in the community, if you are listening, is about wealth and money and understanding. And, and the reason it's so important is because people get stressed out. And when they're stressed out about their money, we know it destroys relationships. It becomes arguments. It's an energy. And money, however you look at it, is an energy. And one of the things I personally learned is I call, I don't know, I came up with this little term and we have our incredible guest, Jeremy, and I'm going to introduce him in a second here with you. I always say there's Keynesian economics. And then I look at the energy and I say there's freedom economics. <laughs> and when I go to freedom, I say that because when I, a lot of people, you know, that when I sold my company, I had a lot of money. I just entrusted it to other people. I didn't know what to do. I wasn't educated lost a lot of it in the tech boom. And then I decided I needed to be responsible. I needed to be educated. I needed to understand so I could tune in and make decisions that worked for me. And we're in really unprecedented times. And one of the things people talk about all the time is what do you do? How do you sleep at night? And I know we have had Jeremy here before and you guys have asked him to come back. He is slammed right now. We will get into that. So you understand what's happening. And, you know, from Guildhall Wealth and I have had the pleasure, I call Jeremy my friend. I have gotten to know him so well. If you've been on this channel, he is aware, he knows what's happening, he's open-minded, he's gonna be straightforward with you. But to get the best education on gold and silver and why and why gold and silver, you've heard me yapping about this for years. And you know, it's good to bring people on like Jeremy who understand because energy is energy, money is energy. And you, you want to sleep at night. And there is so much happening in the world right now. You have heard me say we are, I don't know, Jeremy, you're going to, I am so happy you're here. I, I don't even know where to start on today's show. Like, I'm one, thank you for coming. Two, you know, thank you for helping so many people around the world in the community. You have, you're educating and thank you for coming today because I know I know you are so busy. You probably can't even keep up with last week's emails and phone calls. So thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I always, I, you know, we love, we love talking and, and uh, there's so much we learn from each other. So yeah. Um, yeah. One of, actually, you know, one of the, one of the things I've been thinking about lately a lot is, is something that we kind of, I think you taught it to me. I don't know if it was something we developed in one of our conversations, but just that idea of what happens when people all of a sudden move away from their traditional investments, quote unquote, I'm using air quotes, I can't believe it, um, to, to something actual, to ownership. And their mind instantly goes to what if it's stolen? What if, you know, what if this, what if that? And, it, and it's, it's, it's interesting what the mind can do once you decide to take personal responsibility. Yeah, because we're so conditioned on a certain way. And that's why I say like, we're so conditioned, let somebody else understand it, let somebody else hold it. So then nobody wants that responsibility. And that's where you hear a lot with gold and silver, right? It's like, oh, now I'm responsible. But, you know, there's, that could be a big conversation. We could probably talk about that today. And I know we have a lot of people that have questions. I think because I want to say if anybody's new to today and tuning into Jeremy, please, please, please go to the Guildhall Wealth site, but check them out. But 
go and listen to the real money show. I love the real money show. I listen to it every week. If I miss it, I get it on my YouTube and I go listen to it again. And the reason I encourage you, especially now, I have been saying you need to get educated because we can't educate you on everything in one hour we try. But there are, oh no, Jim, you must have hundreds of videos of hours up there. Like there's so many. Yeah, so we, many. we started posting uh, the, the, the radio show to YouTube a couple of years ago. Um, we should have been doing it from the get-go, but you know, we've been doing it once a week since 2008. Yeah. So, and, and we try to blend, you know, sort of, um, what's happening grassroots, right. What's happening at, at the base market and also what's happening uh, from an overview. So you kind of get this, um, you know, what's happening in the trenches and what's happening overall in the geopolitical sphere that's, that's happening causing people to move to this market. Yeah, and I think that it's really important if people are learning to go back to the old shows. And I've told people that if you need some more education, go back to the old shows and listen, because it's also, it's a great way to kind of get a progress of, like you said, like if you went back to 2008 and listened to the odd show every year up to now, people would be like, wow, I understand why we're talking gold and silver. And I, I, I got to ask you the question that I'm sure everybody's asked you in the last, you know, two weeks. Um, right. They want to know why there is no silver. Why is these short squeeze? What does it mean to the average person? How long do they have to wait? Like people are asking me this question. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I'll shift the energy. You got to go call Jeremy or go do some research. So can you start to touch on that so people can understand? Because they're like, do we go i've heard this do i go to a different like a different investment or market because i want gold and silver but i can't get any right it's a big question i know it, it is a big question and there's a lot of moving parts to it and i'll do my best to explain what's happening and why why it is that you can't get physical metal right now although if you contact us at guildhall we do have um we have been able to replenish our stocks pretty quick um, so, you know, it does kind of start with the spotlight of the, the Wall Street bets and the Reddit, um, which is, uh, do you want me to give a quick review on that? A quick review for people who may go, hmm, because okay. we want people at the end of the show to go, maybe I need a little bit because I want them to sleep at night. <laughs> right. So basically there was a forum on Reddit, um, called Wall Street bets and they decided to get together and they were just doing their research and that they saw a bunch of hedge, fund, hedge funds were shorting this stock called GameStop. And if you've ever been to a mall and seen the video game store where you can trade in old video games and buy new ones, you know, all of these type of companies are, are, are not doing well, right? Anything where you're walking traffic. So you have that, you've got Blackberry, uh, AMC theaters. So they started going after these beat up stocks that were being shorted uh, arrogantly by hedge funds talking about shorting it. And so they just went the other way and it was like fast money and they were really excited. And all of a sudden they went from, you know, a few thousand followers to millions of followers overnight. And people were pushing stocks up and they even pushed up um, a cryptocurrency called, I think, Dogcoin or Dogecoin. Oh, Dogecoin. Um, and that I went mean. crazy. It went like 400% <laughs> in a day or something. It so, means it does nothing. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, guys, nothing. Don't go there. Yeah. Right. So, so that happened. And then they decided, you know, cause, and, and what was great about it was this kind of power to the people and what turned, what transpired is Robinhood, the app that a lot of these people were trading on cut off GameStop, literally took it off the app and started selling people. And that really made everyone look and say, what is going on? How come there's rules for me, but not for you. Mm -hmm. right? So now you have this kind of, um, you know, people are, are, are turning away from Wall Street and they're seeing what's happening. And, and it's kind of a revolution in a way. Interestingly though, the whole Reddit thing, it only took one week to cannibalize itself. So you've got the top players who are selling out now to Hollywood, getting, you know, getting movie deals and whatever. And the rest of them are saying, well, you weren't the ones who came up with all of these ideas. Anyway, it's completely cannibalized, but somewhere along the way, these guys decided let's take on the biggest of all shorts which is the silver market. Yeah. Now, what, what they didn't understand, and we were excited, we talked about it on the show, that this is exciting. They're putting a spotlight on this market, but we even said on our show, it's one thing to take on a hedge fund. It's another thing to take on JP Morgan and the treasury of the United States, because um, they just won't let that happen. 
No. But what you what you discover in these type of moments, and we saw it in the past week, but we also saw it back in March, right? When everyone was was cramming to get toilet paper, cash out of the bank, and physical gold, is that it doesn't take long for the physical market to get sucked up, right? To just ev evaporate what's what's available and premiums to go sky high. And it makes you say, well, wait a minute, why is that, right? That was your question. Why is it that the price hasn't skyrocketed, but there's no product available? That clearly that doesn't make sense. There's a cognitive dissonance there. And what that is, is that there is a paper market for the metals in the futures market. And then there's the actual real world market. They do intersect at some point. For example, last March and April, May, when people were pushing this market so hard to get physical product that it evaporated. And that showed you first off that there's not that much product available at any given time, right? That, that you can only bring so much precious metals into the market on a monthly basis. And if demand is beyond that, you have a big issue, right? You end up with a bottleneck. So premiums went high. And not only that, but the paper market went down. So the futures market decided we're gonna push this price down because what they try to do essentially is demoralize the market. We don't want people buying metals. Don't you get it? We want people buying stocks. We want people buying anything but precious metals because precious metals is the barometer of how well the finance system is doing, especially gold. So we don't want people in this market. Ignore it, ignore it. Interestingly, they, they've not been able to ignore it. They've had to start saying, look, the stock market's at all-time highs, stock market, uh, um, real estate's at all-time highs. Where else are you supposed to put your money? And you end up with a lot of people with cash in the bank, and they're saying, well, what am I supposed to do with this? I'm getting you know less what? than 1%. There's two things you brought up there I want to ask you, because there's questions here that people ask me. And I always say, I say this forever. Don't wait for a crisis before you take action. I don't care if it's your health, your money, whatever. But humans always wait for the crisis and then say what's happening. This is what you're seeing in the metals, right? They're like panicking. But to, there, actually, there's a, que a couple questions here. So I want to ask them all because I think they're really relevant for people listening. They're afraid of what they're hearing, but not understanding in the news. So if they don't have the metals yet, and what do they do if they have, uh, you know, 20 or $100,000 of cash in the bank? Because it happened to me, I'll tell you, last week, I went to move some money, and I usually have a $3,000, like, interact, you know, where I can move I, money to wherever, yeah. and they dropped it down to two. I'm like, what, wow. what happened? You know, like, whoa, I had to call, and they're going, oh, well, we're readjusting the limits. I'm like, I'm just sending, like, to the friend, like, come on here, you know? Yeah. And so they want to know, like, how does this affect cash in the bank in your perception? I know not advice, but in your perception and if they're waiting for metals, because people don't know what to do right now. They're really confused. Yeah, I, I would say just have a little patience. This yeah. is still really, really early in the market. Yeah. The prices that you're seeing right now are still incredibly cheap. Yeah. Um, Again, there is a paper market and a physical market. And what we end up seeing in the physical market, which we're seeing a repeat of, is when the premiums are going really, really high, that's saying that the paper price mechanism is broken. The price discovery mechanism of paper is broken. You can- Can you explain you can that for paper. people that may not get it? Is it, My understanding is like, because when you look at a spot price, I don't know what it is today, like, I don't know, 27 or whatever it is. But then to buy like a one ounce round in Canada, what is it? Almost 50 bucks? Like, right. That's right. the so, spread you're talking about. for people. Yeah. So, so there's the paper price, which is yeah. the non-fabricated price of the metal, yeah. which means that if you decide to go out and get exposure to the market and get a precious metals or silver investment, like the ETF or a fund or a pool account or a certificate, you're not going to pay much over that paper price because you didn't actually acquire anything. What you want to be buying and what's not on the shelves, although you can call us at Guildhall, um, is, is actually an end user retail product. So it's been, it's been sourced, it's been refined, purified, put into a, into a specific bar coin, hedged, perhaps packaged, right? Insured, shipped to a wholesaler who then, who then distributes it to retailers. I like to use the, the Kit Kat analogy. You know, yeah. Nestle takes milk and chocolate and sugar, 
and they put it together and they create a mold and then they package it and they ship it out to a wholesaler who distributes it to SO and shoppers. It's the same thing here. That's exactly what we're doing. What do you say to the people who are, you brought them up, so I'm going to bring them up. JP Morgan, super manipulative. I know you know you know more than I do, but I've read all the manipulation. I'll pay a fine and keep manipulating, pay a fine and manipulate. You and I did that, we'd be in jail for the next five life to, lifetimes, like literally, right? So a lot of people say, then what's the point if they keep manipulating? Can you address that? Yeah. So, so I mean, that's a big story. You can, you can go down the rabbit hole yourself on, yeah. on, on that. <laughs> that. There's though. actually a great, there's actually a great book. Um, I think it's called the, the history of silver and it kind of goes into that. Um, you know, the, the, the creation of the comics itself was, was meant to suppress the price as much as possible, but more, more than suppress the price, demoralize people from wanting to get involved in the market. But again, you know, the physical world is the truth and the physical world overwhelms the paper market every time. And that's, that's actually getting back to what the Reddit guys were trying to do. If you can override the paper market with physical, you will push the price to unimaginable places. Now, people like Mike Maloney, who, who's written some, some really easy to understand books in the, in the market says, don't look at that as a negative, look at it as a positive that they are helping you. They're literally holding the window open for you to get in at the lower price. Because at some point, the window is going to slam shut and the price is going to rocket higher and it's going to be who owns it, who doesn't. Um, but what happens in the paper market, in the physical market, I should say, is that the premiums start to rise because it's disconnecting from the paper. We saw a great example of it. We've seen three examples of it. The first was 2008. The price of silver went from $21 down to $8, okay? There were no e-stores. It was just eBay. But on eBay, you, you couldn't buy silver for under $16. Wow. And through a wholesaler, you couldn't really buy it for less than $14. So you could see that disconnect. And what happened as a result? Silver went from $8 to $50 within the next three years. Yeah. Let's look at March. Premiums, silver goes to, silver's trading around $17, $18. They push the price down to 11. You can't buy it for less than 19. And within two months, three months, the price of silver is $31 an ounce. It comes back down to $23, $24. But look at that move. That ended up being a 45% gain in silver. Okay, let's bring up to where we are today. Price of silver is 20. We were around 26, $25 an ounce. The market was already moving all through January, all through December, creeping back up from a pullback to that 23. All of a sudden, the premiums were trading at $26 and you can't buy it for less than 31. It is the exact same thing. It's the echo of what we saw back in March. Well, what happened to the market as a result? The price went up 45%. There is no way you're not going to see that happen again. And at the end of the day, the difference to, to really drive home the point of physical is people think they don't need the physical until the time comes that you want the physical, right? When, when everything crazy goes ha happens, right? Like the banks, mm -hmm. go try to take your cash in. That's a bank run. Do they have enough cash for you? No, they don't. When the chips are down, do you think, do you think when the day comes that you needed to go out and get your toilet paper and the the shelves are empty. Do you think your pool account is going to deliver? Yeah, absolutely not. You know, I like you say that because, and I, I use this in the community and I, I, I heard you say it, so I'm going to repeat it. You, you said in one of your shows, and I've been repeating oh. it over and over that, like, if you're buying the paper, it's like me selling my house to 10 people and then saying you can come get it whenever but only one person could have the house like that statement i'm sorry was like whoa like like through the roof makes you think and i was like the last time i was at the bank they were telling people you can you have to call ahead if you want to take out more than a thousand dollars so yeah if 10 people walked into the bank and those 10 people all had you know, probably they all wanted to take out $5,000. None of them could take it out. Maybe the first person might, because I don't even think the banks anymore. I don't know what percentage, but last I keep reading, it doesn't sound like they have a percentage of cash on hand. So right. I'm like, I don't know what's true or false, but, um, you know, I think that really speaks volumes to what you're saying here, because the other, the other thing that that brings up that I, I would love to hear your response to is 
through this year, there's a lot of talk around, will we go to um, deflation and then into hyperinflation? Now, I'm just going to give you my personal, and I'd love to hear what you say. Like, I look at it, I think, well, I think we're already in hyperinflation because a bag of groceries, even last year, was 50 bucks, is now 100 bucks. So you're going to tell me we're going to go into deflation, but nothing we consume is in deflation. So even I get confused and I look at the metals and I'm like, well, at least my metals are growing. I'd love to hear because a lot of people, and I've heard this from people, I heard something the other day, someone sent me, and I'm not going to say his name. I'm not a fan of him at all. I've heard him. I'll tell you off air because you will know. <laughs> and he's like, okay. well, you know, the gold's going to go to zero and the silver is going to go to zero because we're going to hit deflation. And I can't, I don't even ring true. I'm like, stop listening to that stuff. But that's my just my opinion. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to know your thoughts around this because you do hear people and then people get scared. Oh, I shouldn't get gold and silver because of deflation. And that's what happened. They sent it to me scared. And I'm like, I would just, my personal opinion, can't tell you what to do, go do some homework and not listen to that. But yeah. what do you say to those people? Because that's a real, that's a question, I guess. Um, well, first of all, that's, that's false. There, there's no, there's no, um, that, that just doesn't make any sense. Gold has been around for thousands of years. You could bury it in the ground for thousands of years, pull it back out, and it's just as good as when you buried it thousands of years ago. You can quickly melt it and create something else out of it. So it's got, it's got a, an inherent use to it, silver as well. Okay, silver tarnishes. Okay, great, just, just clean it up, no big deal. So there's no... It, thousands of years, inflations and deflations, and the price has never gone to zero. So whoever is saying that is just completely out of their mind. But the problem- I'll put in a comment for you, so you can read it privately. <laughs> okay. the, problem with, the problem with things like that, and, and this is sort of a couple overarching themes, I think stuff that you and I are talking about um, outside of the market is that um, I'm loving this quote by Mark Twain that it's easier to fool someone than convince them that they've been fooled. Amen. And, and you walk around and I'm, you know, listening to one of your, your uh, recent podcasts, you're talking about going to, I think it was Costco and not wearing a mask. And it's amazing how quickly people are scared yeah. when they should be angry. Yeah. I and agree. that's, and really that goes back to the Reddit thing. That's why, that's why it was so exciting at the time, because it was, we're angry. We're not scared. We're angry. We're going to go out and we're going to go hammer the Wall Street guys as much as we can. Turns out they couldn't, right? Yeah. I mean, they did and they didn't. But, but I think it raised awareness into the marketplace, yes. which is, to me, that's huge because I'm even hearing more people say like, Oh, so I, I can go buy the, the product or, oh, now I can get it in my TFSA or my, like more than before, you know, they've heard us talk about this for a long time and they're not even paying attention. All right. Now it's sort of, it twigged. So I think yes. they, they at least raise the awareness that, oh, maybe I should look at, at the silver. And I think that it's also is maybe because people should be mad right now because what they're not doing. And I said this the other day, people need to start critical thinking, not drinking the Kool-Aid, but critical thinking and asking questions, whether it's gold, silver, like I'm going to say it. And I've said it repeatedly because it's driving me nuts. I don't need anything in my body when there has a 99.9% .9 recovery rate and everything else is like, like critical think right there. Critical thinking. Yeah. Critical think guys. Like I, I sometimes today I'm lost for words when I've looked at some of this. And even when it comes to gold and silver and I'm like, critical think because I know somebody had reached out and they're like, I'm going to move some money to Jeremy. I want to move my TFSA and my RSP and their broker literally lost it on them. Like why would you <laughs> do that? And you're not going to make any money. And, and her whole reasoning was she wanted to sleep at night because I energetically, I've been talking about this and you can tell the fundamentals, but I'm just going on an, on an energetic and I've been saying this for a year. I don't like what I'm seeing energetically in the financial markets in March and April. And I don't know how all the fundamentals line up there. It's not my expertise. I try my best to consume, but I will tell you because I have gold and silver, I actually go to bed and sleep at night. And I, you know, I've, I've been the person though for years, dollar cost averaging, and they think I'm crazy, but I'm like, yeah. everyone I talk to still says, oh yeah, well, if I have like, I have one coin, I'm okay. And I'm like, uh, that wouldn't let me sleep at night. So yeah. 
like, I think it's, it's a point to start critical thinking around your money and viruses and what you're being fed, but from institutions versus what's really going on. I totally agree. I totally agree. And I, I think talking about the market, just to kind of bring it back to there for just a moment, you have to understand that you can't snap your fingers and double the mine supply of metals. You can't snap your fingers and double the supply of physical product. So there's a finite amount, right? This is something they're always clamoring on about with the cryptos. There's a mathematical finite amount. Well, yeah, you can expand the supply of, of metals, but only by one, one and a half percent a year, maybe two. So there's a finite amount of it. And so there's only so much you can, you can purchase. But if there's, too much, if there's too much demand and not enough supply, the only way to be able to ration out the product to everyone that wants it is for the price to skyrocket. Because if you have 100,000 and can buy 2,500 ounces of silver, but the price doubles, you're only buying 1,250. So you're no longer putting the pressure on the supply side. So it's so obvious where the price has to go and it's continued to move higher. And I think that's what people ignore through this is they, they kind of look at right what's happening today. How come the price isn't skyrocketing? Okay, yeah. it's up 45% since last year and it's averaged 11%, 12% for the last 15 years. So, you know, hang on little tomato, it's, it's happening. It's gonna <laughs> happen and it's gonna, be, it's gonna be spectacular. And the thing is, the thing that's interesting about it is that I speak to people today in the last couple of weeks, just kind of giving a quick survey. Hey, do you think the price is going to go to $50? That was a, that was a number set in 1980 that if I asked someone that three years ago, they'd say, yeah, maybe, you know, I'm just looking for it to get to 35. Today, people, undoubtedly, it's going to go to 50. No issue there. I have no problem. Because in Canadian dollars, you're paying $41. Yeah. So of course it's going to go to 50. The question is how, how much higher can it go? And just before we started, I showed you the debt clock and the silver to dollar ratio right now is something like 4,500 or $3,500. Gold is at 35,000. Now these numbers might sound ridiculous, but if gold went to one to one on the Dow, which is the gold Dow ratio, you're there. Yeah. That's yeah. without the price. That's without the Dow falling. So even if the Dow came down by 30% and so and gold tripled, doubled, like quadrupled, whatever, you're still going to get there. So I it, it's and pretty I, amazing. I, I like that, um, you know, I, like you say, it's slow and steady. And this is one thing I think people, they have to stop chasing or looking for, I love the slow, steady model, right? Like there's, you can't be everybody wants instant quick fix tomorrow. And I think with the gold and silver, people get confused and they're like, oh, well, why isn't it like going up 20 times? Well, I look at the silver, like you said, from last year and even the gold, I'm like, wow, it's been when I, cause I dollar cost averaged over the years. Right. So I'm like, wow, this is really a nice return. And I will say, I, I have no problem saying this publicly. I, I yanked everything I had from a broker because I wasn't getting returns and I sleep at night because I'm actually getting slow, steady, nice returns. We're having a lot of gold and silver, but I'm more aggressive than most people in that area. I, I sleep. I'm okay with it. I do my homework. I ask you questions. I feel how I am and I'm good. Um, I do have some questions here. I do want to see if you're okay asking, there's sure. quite a few, but um, because I think it's important for the listeners. So um People that wanted to understand, so if they're waiting for product and they have TFSA, so in Canada, our tax-free savings, RSPs, um, you do do deal with other countries, right? With their like pension plans and stuff or just we, in Canada? We can. We actually, what we do for, um, for US clients yeah. is because they have the IRA. Yes. And so we have a partner that we can partner up with through the IRA. So we basically say, we introduce you to, to our partner who handles that. Okay. Um, the other question they had is how would they decide like what is a good allocation in their account, like gold versus silver? How can they look at that if they're looking to allocate? So typically, um, first of all, I think anyone new getting into the market, it's, some, it's one of the reasons why we're crazy busy because of the spotlight on the market is a lot of people are dipping a toe in the water, want to get a sense of what that temperature is like. What is it like to get into this market? 
because you actually have to buy a physical product, right? So I think that the first step is always to start small, build, get a comfort level, and then it starts to work. You start to answer those questions for yourself. Typically, people would, would generally go at least 50-50 or even a little bit more on the gold side because gold has less volatility in the market. It really is the wealth preservation. Silver has sort of a dual purpose of it's the people's money. It's an industrial use, right? It's used in computers, cars, cell phones, solar power, wind power, battery. It's all these things that it can it can really drive the price dramatically. And it's, it's a much smaller market. So what's that? Sheets. I actually bought some sheets they were infused with silver. Sheets. People okay. don't know. Yeah, best sheets I've ever bought my whole life. Okay. Infused with silver, like real silver. And I'll tell you, they, silver is also amazing for getting rid of viruses and bacteria. Yeah, yeah. silver spoon in your mouth. Where did where did that come from, right? Exactly, and that's that's where it was. So the the other question is, if you have a small amount to start with, would you silver or gold first? So you're saying maybe the gold if you have a little bit, right? Well, that, okay, so so you gotta know the rules before you break them, right? Okay, yeah. So if it's a larger account, again, most people will go a little bit more gold, maybe a 70-30 split. Maybe if they're really aggressive, I'll, I'll steal from the financial world, they might go 50-50, right? Now, if it's a smaller amount, it's really about building wealth, right? Okay. So if you only have $10,000 to invest, maybe you go all silver. If you only have 20,000 to invest, Maybe you just go all silver because that way you're really looking to make as much as you can off the market. You'll have to be a little more nimble, but then the idea would eventually be to convert your silver gains over to gold for the long term. We believe at Guildhall, and you'll see this as you start doing your research, that you should always maintain 10, 15% of metals in your portfolio. So at some point you're gonna bring, you're gonna, you're gonna sell and bring that all back down. And perhaps when you do all that, you'll probably bring it all back down to gold, right? Because you don't need to store a thousand ounces of silver in your house when you could do the same with a few ounces of gold. So I think that's that's kind of the the end game is to eventually understand that I'm gonna, you know, I've got house insurance and yeah. you know car insurance, and I didn't buy a stock for that. I had to actually go out and buy the actual insurance, um, but. I'm probably always going to hold, maintain 10, 15% because at some point, just as an example, at some point, a lot of people have sold homes, right? They're not getting any money in the bank. They want to put it into something that's going to give them a return. And the low cost to hold metals right now gives them that advantage. But at some point, they're going to buy a house, right? Yeah. Well, actually, that's a question here that somebody had. They're like, what do we do with all our cash in the bank short term? We sold our house and we, you know, they're going to buy eventually again, but I think you just answered them that, right? Like uh, yeah. And I would say to that, um, and again, I'm not a financial advisor, but I would ladder into the market and build up a comfort, you know, get into the market and, and get ahead on some of the, some of the purchases. And then that way you can feel comfortable to say, oh, well, I'm already ahead. I can buy more. Or if, if you do get a better price, which I don't think you can get a better price when the premiums are this high. Yeah. It's just impossible because if the price goes down, the premiums are just higher, right? And I also think in terms of being patient a little bit here to get back to another question earlier, I think it's important to talk about if there's no product available, what do we do? Yeah. As product starts to come into the market, I think the premium, the price will start to rise and the premium will come down a bit. So the price that you're paying right now is, is going to be the actual price you're paying is going to stick around for a little bit until we work off this bottleneck. Yeah, and it's hard so, to say how long that it'll take because yeah. there's a lot of pressure in in the market. Um, I know some of them, there's, I'm gonna lump these ones together a little bit is uh, they're asking about older people, if they have, you know, TFSAs and stuff, is it, where does it fall on that scale? Because, you know, I, I know I tell my parents and this is just my personal point of view, I said, well, it's, it's your insurance. So, you know, if you're concerned, then you have, you know, this insurance, but I know when you get into an older demographic, they talk about risk and, you know, where you want to be. And I, I don't know how you answer that one, given that we're in I, unprecedented times. Well, I think, I think that, um, first of all, it should start with everyone should have some in their portfolio. Yeah. And, 
and like you said, critical thinking. You know, I know that an older clientele is going to say, well, I need to be conservative, right? Okay, so what are you going to do? You're going to put your money into a GIC and lose to inflation? That's, that's, not, that's not smart. You have to realize that you have to realize when the, when, when the game is stacked against you, right? That's kind of what, again, what the GameStop thing was really shedding light on is that, you know, the government says inflation's at 2%. You, you've gone grocery shopping. You know it's higher, right? And that's, and that's nothing. And people don't, compl- they barely complain about inflation, right? They don't complain about property tax. They don't complain about income tax. They don't complain about about. And they'll next do it here in Canada when he wants to raise them thirty percent. Yeah, across right. the board. Yeah. Right. So, so there's no complaining about all the after tax you're paying, and then the the hidden tax of inflation, and you're sitting there saying, "Well, I'll take a I'll take three percent on a on a five year GIC." Yeah. I mean, come on, the writing's on the wall. You just have to look at precious metals. You just have to look at precious metals and say. If a year, a year and a half ago, it cost me just over a dollar an ounce to buy silver, a hundred ounce bar, and today it's almost five dollars an ounce. That tells you everything you need to know about this market. And you try to load the boat. It's hard because there's not a lot of product, but you should be trying to hold to, to load the boat because that's telling you everything you need to know about the demand on this product and where it's headed. And so again, you diversify. We're not telling you to put in 100% of your portfolio. That's not the idea. You can dip a toe in the water, start to build a position, build that comfort level and see how it goes. But I think ultimately for that older person and for any conservative person, you got to realize when it's stacked against you. And I think right now we're seeing that, like when we talk about critical thinking, you know, I, I ask every day, how are houses going through the roof and the stock market going through the roof when in where we live in Canada, we have the highest unemployment and it is around the world and nothing's moving and nobody's selling anything and nobody's working and well, they're working, but in a different way, there's a lot of sectors that are not working, you know, and that are unemployed. And just right there alone, you don't have to go read charts to go something isn't working here. And So just that, what I love about gold and silver, and we haven't touched on this yet, but I want to repeat it for people that are listening. You're out of the bank. Like when I hold my gold and silver in your vault, like there it's in, it's in a separate vault. I'm not going to a regular bank down the way where they can close the doors and say, no, now what's in your vault is mine. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The idea is that it's held outside the banking system. And once you own, this is the, the the beauty of the metals is that there's no counterparty risk, right? Anything that you do with an advisor through the financial system, there's a counterparty there. Having money in the bank, there's a counterparty there. You're you're trusting that the bank will will return your money to you, but they're not giving you anything for that these days. So you have to understand that when you own an asset, there's like gold and silver, there's no counterparty risk. And so if you think of it, you know, you have cash and gold under the bed. The government can print cash a lot faster than you can make earn money. Yeah, they are doing that. I think it's like three billion a week. Um, you know, two hundred thousand plus jobs have been lost, and you know, with all that gov- with all that money printing, people just assume there's. This is a really interesting thing because it it the low interest rates and the money printing. The money printing means government's going to go top down. They're no longer depending on on people because where do they get their money from? Taxes, production, people doing things. And that's gone. It's now becoming, we're moving further and further to socialism, to communism, because it's a top-down planned economy in that sense. But when you lower interest rates and print money, not only are you being, you're, you're not having any discipline. You're teaching other people to not have discipline. So what do people do? And I spoke to this uh, a client of ours who does uh, land surveying, and he said up in Barrie, I think he's um, uh, somewhere near Barrie, he said, you know, the houses have gone over a million dollars. And what he noticed, because he's really big into real estate, he said when it was under a million, 30,000, 40,000 mattered. Mm-hmm. Once it went over a million, who cares? 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, what does it matter? It's an extra $100, right? A month. 
until interest rates spike up, because at some point the government's control over interest rates gets lost. You wonder how, how in Greece interest rates were at 35, 40% in 2011. It's because they didn't have a, the central banks didn't have a handle on it. So you're just going with the idea that we're just going to continue to trust the government. And when you look at their actions, you go, is that really an entity I want to be trusting? So the idea is the critical thinking, you know, um, uh, Gregory Manorino says, you know, be your own central bank, right? If you're a Raptors fan and you see Van Vliet, it's like bet on yourself, right? So that's the idea here is to just be self-sufficient in that way that you're not dependent on what the government is doing because you can see what they're doing and it's not pretty. Well, and it's, I'm going to just say it's, people have heard me say this, so I'm saying it. They're not for you. They're not working for you. They don't want to do anything for you because if they did, they would have changed things 50, 60 years ago. They don't want anything for you. This has definitely gone in a, in a different direction. So we have to do a lot of energy there to get something to shake. We may see it this year, a lot of truths coming out. One of the things I want to point out, and you said it when you're talking there too, about, you know, being that there's no inter-party risk. One of the things that I think people forget is if they called you and said, okay, I have gold and silver in the vault, Jeremy, sell, sell this X amount gold or so. How long would it take you to do that for them? It's, it's instant. Yeah. So you get, we basically just put the invoice together and send it to you. You confirm it and it's booked. Well, by the end of the day, they're done. Their money's on their way to them, pretty much. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. pretty much. This is what people forget, because if you ever traded stocks or you have a broker in stocks and, you know, I've been there and I'm not saying you got to do what you want to do, but it takes, they have to sell it and it takes time to sell it. And then it goes through their processing and then they got to go through all their whatever channels they have. It takes a couple of days before it shows up in your account. You can't just say, I need that money, trade it, move it. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, it, it, it's true. The banks are very slow. And as you're talking about that um, and, and the issues that you can have with that, precious metals is very liquid. We work with a wholesaler who, so we have a choice at Guildhall. I'm talking outside the registered account where we can take that product back for our own inventory if it's product that we deal with regularly. Or we can just say, I'm going to take it back from you and sell it right back to the wholesaler because it's their job to hedge. If they have a ton of sellers, they can legitimately short the market to hedge their inventory. That's what that's what the futures market's about, right? That's not what they're actually doing at, at JP Morgan. But I think that you know, when when you talk about Tracy, about you know what's happening right now in the world and the great change and the fact that you know people have been Uh, censored in one place and they've all moved to somewhere else and there's just a flood of information now Um, and you have to sift through it you can't just believe everything that you're reading a lot of times you have to sit there and say um I'll wait a few days on that one to see how that pans out right yeah but but this the fact that people are moving into cryptos which has nothing to do with the banks the fact that they're pulling money out of the banks and going into precious metals Mm -hmm. it, it does it does have an effect you know, buying, I've always thought that buying precious metals is a vote against the financial system. I agree. And, I and, if, and if you look at, if you look at like uh, someone like Judy Shelton, who, who, who is part of the Fed now, uh, she's a gold enthusiast, or even, even Greenspan when he was, because he was a gold bug, he, he understood it very much. Um, the idea was that the, the, the Federal Reserve was supposed to mimic um, what gold does, right? And they haven't been able to do it. And they've always, they've always used Judy Shelton and introduced this concept, which she took from, from Greenspan, this idea that we could go back to a gold standard-ish, where basically if you don't feel that the, the currency is doing well, you can pull out and go, go get the gold. And that was always the idea. That was always the idea. If if you if everything was convertible into gold and the government was being irresponsible, like they were between basically 1950 all the way to 1970 where they were just printing money and every country was like well I'll convert my gold you're keeping it at $35 an ounce you've printed all this money which means gold is worth way more send me the gold eventually they ran out eventually they said we can't just keep giving gold away at this low price cut it off it's it's our currency but it's your problem right welcome to welcome to 2021 but it's a to own it is a vote against the system in a way. 
I, I think, again, just to kind of keep it up to date on what's happening in the markets, I think that's what the Reddit crew, or at least portions of it, were, were hooking into, that owning precious metals is a vote against what's happening. And I, I'm really happy you said that. I can't believe we're getting to the top of the hour. I'm happy you said that because I always say to people, you can use, you don't have to be protesting in the streets, but you can use critical thinking. Like you said, gold and silver. That is why people are also looking at crypto. They're looking at, you know, funding. They send now, instead of funding this medical space, they're funding lawyers that are fighting for their rights and, you know, their human rights. And, and I, I love that you said this because it's like, how can we take our money and say, no, that's our protest. And this is what it is, is like, I'm moving my RSP, my TFSA. I don't own an RSP, but I moved my entire TFSA to gold and silver because I was like, I, and that's my choice. I wanted to do it. I wanted to sleep well. You and I have talked about that, but it's like, that is my way of saying, I can't say it on air, but bye-bye guys. I don't want anything. Right. You. Um, I gotta be careful there. But that was my way of saying, I'm not going to play in your system and I'm going to do what I can. And if all of us keep stepping up and doing a little bit different and moving to gold and silver and saying, no, I'm not going to play in that game anymore. And I'm going to help fund the people that are out there that can do other things for our rights as, you know, humanity, then this is a perfect time. And I think that as we get to the top of the hour, because I know, you know, you have been helping so many people and I would love for you to share with everyone before we go, what is your thoughts as we look through the rest of 2021, knowing that our stock markets are probably going to go through some crazy, it's no secret. It's all, people are talking about it. We're going to get, we got to have some correction. This is just not, you know, how deep, who knows? Will they hold right. it up? Who knows? But what is your thought with gold and silver? What is your thought when Jeremy Wiseman looks at 2021 what would you want to leave with people for food for thought, critical thinking, gold and silver for this year, even though you're coming back? <laughs> wow. Um, well, I, I think that, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll talk about something that I've been thinking about recently. I, we've mentioned some of the themes and some of the trends, but I've just noticed how much the, the way people who are buying these days are different than when I first started. Um, I started in 2006, so this was a few years before the, the, um, the finance crisis in 2008. Mm -hmm. And back then, people were throwing money around. They would say, yeah, I got 30000 to lose. That was really, that was the common theme. It was, yeah, I'll put it into this. I've got money to lose. After 2008 and central banks became net buyers of gold, people became a lot more conservative and they were looking for ways to protect. And, and that 2008 crisis really separated people in terms of, there were a lot of people that said, this is not for me. And a lot of people said, wow, this is what's going on. I really need to own the metal. And today there seems to be a lot more emphasis on, on the bigger picture of what's happening in the institutions, governments. There's a much bigger, it, it seems a whole lot bigger than it used to. It's not just, hey, you should have some metals. Yeah, your advisor says this, great, stick with your advisor, have some metal. It's very different now. And I, I'm not sure where this heads, but I do believe from all of my conversations, especially my conversations with people um, regarding crypto, because people are very focused on the future with crypto, that I guess I would leave it with the idea that metals is a bridge. Mm -hmm. It is your wealth protection and to have it in something that has been around for thousands of years used as a store of wealth, used as it is money. Yes, it's been used as currency, but it is money. And I, I talk about this a lot on the show, but if you look at what happened at Brexit, the British pound lost 30% of its purchasing power in a day against a basket of currencies and gold went up 30%. So if you had gold during Brexit, you, you hedged. Yeah. Imagine if you had, were living in Italy and you had to convert over to the Euro. You lost a lot of money in that conversion. Imagine as a Canadian, if you instantly had to convert over to the US, you'd instantly lose 30% of your purchasing power. You need something as a bridge that's going to get you to whatever this new system looks like. And I think the, the new system, look, we can go down a bit of a rabbit hole, but it seems to me, I don't, I'm not sure if you would agree, 
Are we going to a great reset new world order or are we moving into something completely different? And when you look at all of these CEOs stepping down, I mean, if I had a portfolio and I had Google in it and the, or Amazon and the CEO just stepped down, I mean, I've done that before. I had Lululemon, the CEO stepped down. What was the first thing I did? I sold it. Yeah. I don't know what's happening to this stock afterwards, but when you have this many people leaving their posts, they're either waiting for a drop or something else is happening. And so I, I think that you need a bridge. I love that you said that. And I agree a thousand percent. I, this is what this year is about. I have said it over and over. 2021 is going to go down in history. It'll be the one everybody will remember. I don't think that, um, as they say, the fat lady hasn't sung yet. <laughs> so, you know, whether it's going to the government reset or the people reset. And I think that when I look at the energy, I can say the people standing up, although it, they have been sheltered and pushed off is a lot higher than anyone actually really would know if you're watching mainstream media. So the thing I love about the gold, the silver, the crypto that I see energetically is it is, the, that's why I call it the freedom economics. I don't know why that's what I, I like. It, but it's the people saying no more, we want to speak and this is how we're going to speak. And, and I love that. So where can everybody find you? And I just want to reiterate guys, he can work with you. So you can work with people all over the world, correct? Okay. Uh, TFSAs and RSPs in Canada and pensions in the States. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. So where's the best way for them to get a hold of you? <laughs> <laughs> so guildhallwealth.com. Um, go to guildhallwealth.com. You can email me direct at Jeremy W at guildhallwealth.com. And um, yeah, just uh, through, through the website, uh, my email, and uh, we're happy to help. Remember, if you can't hold it, you don't own it. So everything we do at Guildhall has to be physical. Um, we don't believe in any way uh, for paper versions of this. Well, and if anybody's second guessing that, go back to what we said earlier in the show. Paper, they're going to sell it to 10, but only one of you get it in the end if whatever's there. And I think that that's what has to be looked at. So Thank you so much for joining me. I, I'm so grateful. I know how busy you are. I hope you will come back because I know we could talk for ever and there's still more questions, but what you do is important. And I think that this time in history, more important than ever before. So thank you for coming and helping our community. I really thank appreciate you, Tracy. Love, love hanging out with you. Love being with you and your audience because you guys are, are really the best and I have to say also energetically, like everyone around you is, 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 uh, is glowing. So it's amazing to work with. So, so happy to be here. And if you, anyone needs anything, you give us a call. Yes. Thank you so, so much. So everyone, I'm so happy you tuned in. And yes, I know you asked me to have Jeremy back. So we will have him back again. Uh, make sure you check him out, guildhallwealth.com. I have been there. I can tell you, you will get the best service ever. And people always ask me, do you have to worry? No, you never have to worry. They are going to, it's reputable because I know, don't, don't go to eBay. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so have an incredible week. We'll see you next week for a call-in show. And don't forget to check out the book club tonight too. You can still sign up at tracyoclark.com. And we're going to read all about giving, receiving, and gratitude. So it goes very well with our show today. So have a great week, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Tracy L. Clark Show with me, Tracy L where I teach you how to connect to the God consciousness so you can unlock your superpowers and connect at light speed and live your extraordinary life. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio, where together we will unlock the secrets of your body and your life. As the founder of the Body Regeneration Academy, I, Tracy Al, will provide you with the insight and simple tools you can apply right now in your life to move you forward and leave the past in the dust. To join the Body Regeneration TLC Online Academy, make sure you check me out at tracylclark.com.